Alright, alright, alright. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Diamond in the Rough where we look at one of the most creative Terran players in the world and a special set of replays is what we have for you guys today. Uh, we've actually gathered three different games into today's video and they are all either him being cheesed or, or cheesing himself. Essentially these are quick dirty builds and I haven't actually looked at them, I've just looked at the names and I've said, okay, this sounds like it's basically a couple of potentially quick solutions to Protoss, or at least build orders that do very well at shutting down their cheesy openings. Speaking of cheesy openings, there's a probe hiding in his third base. And that looks like he's getting proxied in some way. Okay, so Ruff is in the top right side representing Storm Gaming. He's doing a one base double gas opening, and he's going for his own proxy. Proxy versus proxy. Okay, all right. Okay, this is good then. So we're going to see one of his cheesy builds up against a Protoss cheesy build. I like it. So proxy second gateway. So it looks kind of normal at home to the untrained eye. But if you come in at a certain point, you'd be like, wait, why is there no Nexus? Why is there no second gap? Plus, oh, there's gateways hidden somewhere or a gateway hidden somewhere. But there is a second gas. Oh, this is going to be, I think this is meant to be the one where you proxy gate into proxy void rate. And by the way, this Louie player is about 5-5 five, five on the North American ladder. I played them just the other day. And they are a very cheeky one. He's going reactor first into orbital. And he's proxied a super quick factory at a minute 32. A minute 32 he's built this factory. Wow, that's fast. That's about as quick as you can possibly get it. Um, the question is, will he get a bunker up at home in time? Because he has no scouting. And, and if you just chrono a stalker from here immediately, yeah, uh-oh, uh-oh, yep, yep, there we go. Both gateways getting chrono boosted, two stalkers on the way. So there's going to be a gateway pressure, and I think he'll probably follow it up with a stargate and try to do some void ray battery shenanigans. SCV's hunting right now, though. And he's building... What? Oh, he's going to float in and do the Widow Mines with the armory. So he's doing the floated factory Widow Mine build. So the idea is, guys, when you get an armory, your Widow Mines your widow mines become invisibility even when they've already fired their shot. Whereas normally they're only invisible until they shoot. And then you can see them until they're ready to shoot again, basically. So it's like a limited invisibility. Armory unlocks permanent cloak for them, essentially. Two Reapers on the way. Reapers are very good units at fighting. I don't know if two can beat a Stalker, though. But I guess his SCVs are going to help him fight it, and he can pull back the weak ones. With the Reaper grenades, this can get very dicey. You're happy to trade one Reaper for it, but oh, not good micro from Ruff. He loses it. Oh, he's in trouble, man. Oh, the drill! The drilly boy gets the last hit on the Stalker last time. Louis going to underestimate that, and I like the way Ruff's leaving this open. I think Ruff's doing that on purpose. Oh, the Widow Mine's already in. I forgot how quick they build. Already got four probe kills on the first one. I almost feel like just let the Stalkers in. Stalker shield battery is going to break him at home, man. There's no... Wait, okay, there's a Robo on the way. So it's one base Robo now trying to get detection up. Depot's starting to fall. He's going to send his Reapers over to the other side of the map. Ruff is doubling down on this. And look at that. Probe's being pulled to stop him getting in the mineral line. That means the Stalker's going to go down. That's the more valuable target than hitting one or two probes at this point. And this is actually wild. He's going to build a tech lab. His other Widow Mine just fired. Sorry, guys, I keep missing the Widow Mines firing. He just got two more probes. Six kills on that Widow Mine, one kill on the other one. He's just built a tech lab. He wants to build a goddamn Thor. He's he's almost out of money. Ruff only spends his last bit of money on that Thor, but he knows his opponent's building observers, not fighting units. And the Reapers are ravaging the worker line right now. Oh, look at this. Oh, Louie, I told you he's good. He got both Widow Mines just before they could fire again. But he's taking a lot of damage at home behind this. Marines are popping out, but they're getting killed as they do. The Reapers, though, doing very big damage. They're going to pull back. I think they want to support that Thor when it does pop out. SCVs are being pulled to repair the Thor. Those are repair SCVs. <laughs> he's already thinking ahead. Ruff is five steps in, and he gets a Drilly Boy surround. Citizens arrest. Six drills all at once, five of them, sorry, penetrating that Stalker. And boy, oh man. I mean, I'm not normally into those sort of brutal, brutal online videos, but you know what? You know what? I'm okay with watching six dudes with drills tear apart a Stalker. It's just a robot anyway, right? It's fine. Thor's going to pop out. It's going to start fighting four Stalkers. Uh, obviously, I think they might be able to meet, beat a Thor on its own, but not with the Reapers and everything else coming in. The Thor is mincing these Stalkers, dude. And the Drilly Boys are here to try and surround. The probes are blocking, though. Oh, but he lifts his factory so his SCVs can get in there. At least two of those SCVs are drilling it, and he's focus firing the Stalkers because he knows that's a higher damage unit. Look, he focuses the Stalker. He gets the Stalker. It's just probes now. Can he get repair, though? The probe's trying to kill him. Oh, my God. He's repaired it. He's repaired it. The hero Thor. 
the proxy armory drop and uh no gg <laughs> what a way to kick it off let's go straight into the next game so protoss vs terran on jaganatha and uh yet another title to this replay like i said that hints at there being a bit of a uh, bit of messy action early on so we'll see exactly what builds come out it's going to be a pylon over there at a bit of a semi wall off kind of going to come down for the protoss Rough so far has not opted for the gas first, so it looks like it's going to be maybe one of these gasless expand builds that he likes. He does like the one where he just builds marines one at a time, goes for the command center, and it indeed looks... Oh, he accidentally pulled some SCVs off the line. Bit of a misclick there, no worries. And gateway on the way, chrono boosting probes, and going to go for the gas guys are there in just a moment as well. Next probe's like, oh, what? I thought my job was to build the gas. Somebody's already done it does just become a pleb mining minerals as this probe comes into harass but a quick scv pull there should be able to fight that off do we see a gas steel oh he's clicked right next to it gas steel would be useless here because he doesn't even plan to take gas for a while rough likes to go for a very quick command center in this scenario and interestingly he's actually scouting rough rarely rarely scv scouts man that is not something we see very often from the creative terran oh ebay block maybe maybe builds a command center you know what it doesn't he's already delaying his gas why not delay it a little bit more this is actually really cute ultimate with his super derpy wall off as well that's going to be really bad for this matchup because he's not going to be able to get in and out of his base on the plus side it'll make it really hard for hellions and like bio to like run up and inside his base sometimes it works out in your favor but he's actually going to take a third Okay, Ultimate taking a third here, and he's looking around. I think he's a little confused. He's like, what is this build order? eBay block and a quick command center? No gases? The Marine's just hiding at the front for now. So Ruff not wanting to show that he's gone Marines. Letting that probe hang out inside his base. He sees the third, so I think he can cancel that engineering bay whenever he feels like it. Oh, run! Run, Drilly Boy, run! No, oh, he gets taken out. Well, you know what? That gives the Marine an excuse here. Vengeance. Vengeance is sweet. Revenge is a dish best served cold, they say. Oh my god, this probe just won't die. This guy is super tryharding his probe. He's like, I got 250 APM, but it's all to keep the probe alive for six seconds longer so that I can I can see the, the water on the edge, the edge of the map and the, the lily pads. To be fair, Ruff's transition is way slower than normal, guys. Normally, he's already have to got the gas. The factory is fully going. On the plus side, he's messed his opponent's build up with that eBay. But I'd love to see that get cancelled. It's kind of funny, though. Keeping it there does give you some info. You know your opponent's not rushing a third base. And it's actually a quick three-gate opening. So Ultimate is going just mass gateway units to try and defend this early third base because he's expecting follow-up aggression. Straight to four gases. Ghost Academy on the way tech lab on the barracks i mean we're just going one barracks ghost this is like the most rough thing ever to do he's like i like ghosts they make sniping they can cloak and things starts it up adept sees that marines will take this adept out rather handily engineering bay is going to take some damage twilight council beyond halfway done second barracks on the way okay no factory this time around but he's got four gases which feels a little bit too much, even for double ghost production. And don't get me wrong, ghosts are very expensive. Minerals and gas both. Protoss player is going to go for Robo, Twilight. Two more gateways. That's a lot of gateways. Five gates on two base. Wow. Wowzers. All right, so... Charge? Oh, this guy's just going to try and do a charge lot all in. Ah, uh, welcome to the North American ladder, guys. Where everyone's favorite thing is to just make a warp prism and fly it across the map and try and kill you with charge lots. Ah, uh, the simple, simple ways of the North American ladder. Well, sentries, though. That's an odd choice. And four gases. Maybe it's going to be Charge or Arc on two base? Interesting. Sentries do almost no damage. He's still got very few actual fighting units, does Ultimate. Meanwhile, Ruff just building up his Ghost Count. He's got a Cloak Factory there. I don't know. Is Ruff just going to go for his four Ghost Assault? This was what it looks like, right? We've seen this fail on so many occasions. I'm always like, let's see how he refines this build order over time, guys. And then you guys are like, you mean pig, you mean watch him run in with four ghosts, try to snipe the observer, and then lose every ghost doing it, and then do no damage and be infinitely behind for the rest of the game? 
And I'm like, yes, yeah, that one minus some of the steps, the ones that are not good for him and only keeping the good steps. Um, well, there's no observers out this game, so honestly, about as good as it could be. The Protoss built a robo and has done nothing with it. Oh, this, this player wants to do a real just like meathead attack, guys. Yeah. This is the guy who tries to headbutt a, a, a cow. I think that's what this Protoss player is doing. He's like, I'm going to make Zeldarkon to attack you. And you know what? It could actually, it's the kind of thing that could kill Ruff. He's got this wall in case Blink Stalkers come up here. That's super cute. So he's got a little pocket here. You think you're inside if you come up this depot, but there's another wall. <laughs> uh, and it's the four ghost. It's the four ghost squad. He's got cloak, guys. So he's going to run forward, but there's no detection. Our Protoss player is playing completely blind other than hallucinations. And hallucinations do not detect. Oh, no. Let's go to his camera. He's about to see the ghosts. He just saw them. Does he realize he's got to make observers right now, man? He's trying to warp in zealots. He didn't see the army. We're on his camera. He doesn't realize what he's playing against, guys. Oh my god, the ghost just went to right past him. He has no idea. He doesn't realize. He's like, hey, where's the army? Let's go fight. I've got Zealot Archon. I, I really want to fight you right now. Oh my god, and Zealot Archon is so bad against ghosts. So he's going to get EMP'd at home as well. Tank plus EMP. He can't break that. The ghosts are just going to walk into the base. Okay, quick response though. Quick response. If he recalls as well. Oh, he recalled to the wrong base. That's a bit of a problem. Oh, if he can scan and kill the Observer. Oh, the Observer! He gets the Observer and he's trying to nuke down the detection. Uh, the, the, the production of the detection in, in terms of the Robo. He's, he's focusing the Prism. Ah, uh, no, no. Oh my God. He just depowered the detection, guys. There's no way to get the detection out. Some of the ghosts will run out of energy in the near future. But dude, he's just, he's just ransacking him. Well, this is exactly what Ruff's hoping for when he goes for this four ghost opening. It's either a player with no detection or one where he can spy that observer. That's why he scanned the army at the front. He was looking for the observer. And when he saw what none, he's just like, oh, no worries. Let's just cloak and run around the right side and try to get in the base. And then he sees that's the only robo. Oh, I'm surprised he let that probe in. But you know what? Look at this. Did you see that? He put a hold position ghost there and he's just killing the zealots and whatnot. The probes are coming back. Oh my god, Ultimate is running around, just absolutely confused, chasing his own tail. He's like, dude, finally an Observer's gonna pop out soon, but the Ghosts have already done so much damage. He's gonna nuke the rep with this Ghost. Oh my god, and the Ghost, he's trying to hold the choke point. He's trying to hold the choke point. Hodor! 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 <laughs> The Observer survives, but everything else goes down. He's killed even more probes in the main base. The Observer's not even sitting there. This Protoss player's brain is broken right now. And that ghost finally goes down, but oh my god, he did more than enough damage there. Oh, that's so funny, man. <laughs> I can't believe he, he got a nuke off on the ramp. Oh, this Protoss player is, is absolutely balked. So, going to go for turrets to make sure he doesn't die. Uh, command center on the third. And he's just pumping ghost tank, I guess. He's going to go for a two tank, six ghost counter attack. <laughs> Ooh, it's quite a few Archons, but it doesn't matter, dude. He's got too much EMP. He just kills them all. That's it. That's it. He's just killed all three Archons before the battery could even heal them. Siege is up. That base is going to get blasted. He's trying to come forward with the Zealots and the Observers. Look at that. The tanks aren't dying. And if the tanks don't die, they are going to kill everything. The ghosts cleaning up the zealots. Tanks cleaning up everything else. And that prism's going to go down as well with a zealot inside. He gets another observer. And of course, those ghosts out of energy, but it will mean more observers need to be built for the next wave. And he can kill this robo if he wants to before he goes, because he knows he'll be held. He clicks it. Robo goes down. And you know what? He's even going to beat those zealots, which means probes in the open. Probes in the open, two undefended worker lines, roughs up to 70 SCVs behind this, pumping out Ghost Tank like mad. And he's taking out these zealots. Nice, stutter step. As these ghosts, eight kills, four kills, gets one last zealot before he goes out. Whoo! And the rough there, very excited with his Terran Dark Templar strategy working. Alright, and the final game from today, guys, is going to be rough once again on Jagannath, this time in the bottom left, showcasing a very special opening. That last one, 
I didn't realize it was a normal opening of his, done with a little bit of a deviation with the engineering bay block, but it was simply that four ghost strategy finally working. I can't believe it finally worked and it worked so damned well. We've seen it, it worked kind of a little bit here or there, but that one was like, mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. His opponent, of course, on the top right is gonna be ASC Praise. Our very well-known StarCraft community member there. And it's gonna be Gas first. Now, this one, um, I believe it said it was a Marauder Ghost build order. So I don't mean to kill the hype, guys. I'm just excited to see what the hell how do you make Marauder Ghost work? So if you think about it, Marauders can have concussive, they're tanky, and they kill Stalk as well, which is normally the weak point of Ghosts is they do lots of bonus damage to Adepts and Zealots, and the Stalk has kind of ruined them. EMP helps, but it's always a little bit nasty. So I can imagine it kind of works in that way. Marauders are also not as gas heavy, and you'll notice like games like that last one we cast, He's got so much minerals behind it and stuff, but there's very rarely enough meat to, to Ruff's follow-ups, right? He's so focused on these. Sorry, guys. I don't know what I just did. Looks like I just changed the speed, apparently. There we go. My bad. Uh, I accidentally flipped my mouse over in excitement. I was doing these ones, and I just went and flipped my mouse. So, oh, this is going to be a one base. Interesting. He raises the wall. Neither side has lost anything. So he's going to go straight for one base ghost to start. Then maybe, maybe just add marauders in behind. No, okay. It's a concussive marauder opening into ghosts. I guess you've already got the tech labs. Ah, that makes sense. Instead of getting things like stim, you're basically just making ghosts. Each ghost is like a stim pack upgrade. A bit more expensive, but kind of similar. And I think he's going to go for a second marauder here. Or no, the ghost academy's already done. So he shows a marauder. And even starts the second one. Doesn't even bother starting concussive. Because he realizes, hey, I can't even spare the 50 gas, dude. Just the threat of a Marauder. The Protoss needs to assume I could build one. They're going to put a shield battery down. They're going to make some stalkers and whatnot. Twilight Council. Very early for praise, by the way. Very, very early. So it could be super quick Dark Templar, potentially. Um, could just be quick Oracle as well. Hey, some people just love Blink. Two Marauders into a Ghost and then the Command Center. He pushes with two marauders and a ghost. He could EMP the shield battery. Battery overcharge would still exist though. I don't think you want to EMP the shield battery. Maybe. I mean, if you EMP it, it gets rid of its own shields, which means 150 hit points is all it's got. And a marauder does 20 damage a shot. It has one armor. So 19 damage um, in seven, eight. It's going to take eight shots either way, which means four volleys of the marauders. EMP plus four... Yeah, that's actually... Okay, yeah, you could kill that shield battery. He's got concussive on the way as well. I think that's what he might be planning. There's there's a sentry coming. Sentry's not going to be, be useful here. I mean, this is so easy to get cocky because you're like, oh, whatever, it's just some marauders. But if he EMPs, and he might even hit a stalker or two with the EMP, if he could hit all three units... Oh my god. Dude, let's see if this works. He's going to go for it. EMPs, gets one stalker, gets the shield battery, and he hits the nexus. So he potentially removes the battery overcharge energy. He does! That was the Nexus that had the overcharge energy. He focuses down both Stalkers and he gets a bunch of probes. The force field will buy a little bit of time here, but oh, he's got to click on the weak Marauder does praise. R look at that, Sentry does almost no damage. Dude, this is all going to get depowered. He's going to lose these three gateways. Oh, he forgot Warp Gate! That's how he started the Twilight Council so first, fast. His Warp Gate didn't start. That's why he got it so early. He's going to lose all these probes. Okay, he's stuck on one gate stalker production in the main. Probes are going to try to surround this. Both of these marauders are just taunting the Protoss. They're on 11 and 25 hit points. They should not be able to do this well. Battery overcharge is available, but guess what? He's inside your main now. There's no shield battery up there. Oh, no. <laughs> and Praise has literally lost the game to two marauders and a ghost. Eight kills, 12 kills on each of the marauders. Three kills there. Make it even more. Oh, my God. He finally loses his first two units of the game. So, and he gets the ghost out. So he, he kills 21 probes, two stalkers, a sentry upon them for two marauders. Last game, you can you can tap out now, Praise. He's got more ghosts, second barracks, a factory. That's such a cute little opening pressure. That's so funny that that actually worked. Because you can see it going the other way, right? If there's energy in the main and he could battery overcharge, you've got to kill the, the, over the battery first. But in that specific scenario, and it's early game, people are chrono boosting pretty hard, pretty consistently. They're not thinking about battery overcharge. 
Damn, I can't believe that worked. Now he's got four ghosts. He's adding more marauders. He's got a factory coming up. Very, very, very funky play. So, that that's the thing as well, right? Where it's like, you'd probably mess that up the first few times you execute it. You'd only hit the battery and then you leave the Nexus energy and it just overcharges. Or you're, you're just hitting 20 seconds late because your build's not tight. But you could tell Ruff had that down to a T. Even then, he must lose a lot of games just trying to find the right scenario for it and understand, oh, against this guy who I know plays this way, it'll work more. Against this other guy, maybe not so much. At the end of the day, though, it's not that expensive of a pressure. Two Marauders and a Ghost. His command set is delayed. He's got to do something. Definitely, if he just loses the units for free, it's very bad. But here we go, guys. Look at that. Three Marauders, five Ghosts for the follow-up. Protoss is on 14 probes and has just no money. Oh my god. <laughs> Why is he still mining gas? I guess I guess to make an observer because he knows there's ghosts coming, but you're on 15 probes. You're dead, mate. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. Oh, the ghosts aren't here. He left the ghosts behind accidentally. They're about a screen behind this, guys. Forces battery overcharge, pulls back, and drops the scan. He sees, hey, there's not that many units there. If you EMP those sentries, they're not going to be able to force field you out. Battery overcharge runs out in two seconds. Ooh, he does take a volley from the Stalkers. EMP there. EMP on the batteries as well. And... Oh, he's getting nuke! I didn't even realize he had a nuke. He has two Ghost Academies. Oh, he EMPs the sentries. He's going to do the nuke. He clicks on the sentries. The probes are being pulled. He's trying desperately to defend this point. But, mate, you are taking a nuke to the goddamn face. And with that, do we get a GG? No GG. Of course, no GG. Not even surprised. GG, well played. Once again, Ruff, thank you for treat teaching us and treating us to some of your naughty builds. I'm especially going to try out that one from game one, the proxy factory with the armory. I still haven't tried that build order, and I even see pros mix that in sometimes. GG, well played, mate.